Hey guys, Tyler Andrew here with Tyler Andrew Performance. Today we're going to talk about extensive throwing cycles. Alright, so the first piece to this is we need to define our parameters. Alright, so with typical like extensive kind of activities, generally the, the cutoff is about 75%. Alright, below that would be considered extensive. In the specific kind of case we're talking about here with throwing, once you get too far below about 90-ish percent, maybe 85 percent, it just starts to change so much that it's no longer really the same pattern, um, which is fine in some instances, but in this case I'm going to allow extensive throwing to go up to 95 percent. All right, once we start getting above that, it's obviously intensive, which just means the intensity is, is very high um, and or maximum. So, maximum. So, extensive prep of any kind basically by nature is lower intensity, higher volume, and what it's doing is preparing you for those intensive means down the line. All right, so we don't just go into the weight room day one and squat our one rep max, right? We do prep work leading up to that. Maybe it's higher volume stuff, um, maybe it's uh, you know some isometric holds, it can be whatever. We're looking for specific adaptations first before we go into those intensive means, all right? So what are the goals here? So we're gonna build tissue tolerance, Right? We want to enhance rhythm and relaxation. This is a really important one. It can be very helpful for even kind of the more advanced athletes. All right? So typically, an extensive phase is going to go on the front end of your kind of like annual plan. Right? So when you start throwing again, either after a layoff or a deload, you're going to necessarily go into an extensive phase. Okay? So this may be your on-ramp, uh, but even more advanced athletes may benefit from specifically assuming they have enough time to do this before their season or tryout or whatever, um, to have specifically an extensive phase if relaxation and rhythm are problems for them. When we start getting up to full effort, this is when we see guys kind of gritting their teeth, depth gripping the ball, and we get things kind of happening out of sequence, all right, we get muscles firing out of order, we have all of these different problems, we have early tension, um, these are all kind of negatives that we don't want. Um, so the extensive phase can really help us build this rhythm and relaxation by keeping us at sub-maximal levels. All right, maybe we have a specific velocity range we're trying to be in, all right, at the easiest effort possible. And this may kind of allow these athletes to feel what easy velocity feels like. So you'll know if you're one of these athletes if at like 90% effort, you throw a mile an hour or two miles an hour throw slower than 100% effort, all right? That's not really how it should happen, all right? If we're not significantly better at full effort than 85, 90%, then we probably have some of this early tension happening and we really don't know how to apply, apply that late intent. So an extensive phase may be really beneficial for you if you have the time to kind of put this in your program uh, because you're far enough out from your competition date. All right? Uh, the next thing is we want to get familiar with certain movements. So in the intensive phase, we're going to have certain movements that we want to use at maximal effort. We want to be familiar with those when we get there. We don't want them to be new because we want to be able to just add intent and be comfortable with those so we can really let it be. All right, if we're using a movement for the first time and it's overly complex, we're not going to get maximum output. You see this in the weight room all the time. You introduce a new movement, right, and we're not able to kind of apply max intent to it. We've got problems with stability, maybe we're uncomfortable with the movement, right, so force, velocity, power, they all tend to be lower the first time you see a movement than later on once you get more comfortable with it. So the extensive phase is a good time to introduce Whatever movement or movements you may want to test or use as maximal, at maximal intensity in the intensive phase. All right? The next thing is to build load and work capacity. Okay? So work capacity is specific to the task. So it's great to have like a general um, kind of higher work capacity, which you get from just being generally fit. But just because you're generally fit doesn't mean you're going to be able to go out for 100 pitches, for example, or throw 10 max effort throws during your intensive phase. So we need to build that uh, kind of work capacity in this extensive phase. And that's when we'll kind of do this. We're going to gradually kind of step that volume up, all right? And we're going to build the work capacity and throwing load, right? Because we know from Tim, Tim Gavitt's research uh, how important the acute to chronic workload ratio can be for kind of keeping us as healthy as possible within reason, right? It's not necessarily predictive of injury um, in all cases, but it can give us kind of some good parameters to stay within if we want to give ourselves the best possible chance to maximize our health. All right, so <clears throat> what are we going to do with the extensive throwing cycle? So we're going to increase the load session to session and week to week for the most part. We may get some kind of waves in there once we get to a high enough intensity, but certainly in the beginning when we're at our lowest intensity, we're just stepping that up session to session as we go. All right, so the parameters here in general, 
we'll use about five to ten percent increase in intensity session to session. All right, not much more than that. And then in volume, we're going to go about ten to twenty percent increase in volume. So these two things need to work together, right? Because load is going to be volume by intensity. All right, so it's not just one or the other. We can't just increase both intensity and volume by 30%, or we're increasing that throwing load by a lot more than 30%, right? So we need to kind of make these two things work together. So if we're gonna increase intensity less, we can increase volume more, and vice versa, right? They're gonna be inversely related. So that's important to kind of note there. Um, generally, I'll be on the lower end of intensity, and um, kind of like I said in, in my other kind of videos and writing, I tend to be more conservative, uh, certainly in the beginning of a relationship with an athlete on the programming side of things. So we'll always kind of want to undershoot these things rather than over. It's much easier, right, to add volume and intensity later than it is to kind of take it away, right? You over bake a cake, you can't do anything about it. You under bake a cake, you just put it back in the oven. So that's kind of a simple way to think about this in terms of programming as well. All right, um, so right, 30% total load increase is the high end of safe, according to kind of Tim Gavitt's acute to chronic workload uh, ratio research. So that means basically week to week, session to session, we don't want to increase that load by more than 30%. All right, that's the high end of safe. So we want to stay somewhere at that number or below. We start getting outside of that range, we start increasing our injury risk. Um, and then once we get above 50% increase, our injury risk goes up significantly. So that's really important to kind of stay under that number. All right, so a couple of ideas for how to use this. I right, want to gamify training is one option. So we can use VLO horseshoes, which I've uh, written and posted a video about before. Uh, but basically you get points for how close you stay to your predicted velocity number within a given range that the coach or you decide on based on a percentage of your velocity, all right? So that's one option, all right? That can be really fun if you have a group of athletes or a couple of athletes who like to compete with each other. Um, and rather than just going who can throw the hardest, it's who can get the most points during this VLO horseshoes game by staying within this range. Um, it gets some good competition, and this really kind of helps these athletes with the rhythm and relaxation stuff we were talking about before. So that's one option. The other option is just have a specific velocity where you don't have any competition associated with it, and you're going to cue the easiest possible effort to get in this range. All right. So let's say the range is 80 to 85 miles an hour as a shuffle throw. All right. What is the easiest possible effort you can use and still be within that range? All right. If you can use, you know, 65% of your max effort and you can still hit 80 miles an hour, let's use that. And then once we get there, we can just try to take that effort down and still hit that same number, or we can take that, up, that effort up um, by as little as possible and still hit the higher end of that range, all right? So that's another option. Um, when you're kind of programming this, you want to use more general drills that involve rhythm, but again, keep in mind, we also want to familiarize ourselves with stuff that we may want to test later. So you kind of have to balance those two things. So if you're not planning on testing some kind of shuffle throw in the intensive phase, Maybe you don't use that, but maybe you're going to test, uh, you know, a figure eight rocker or something like that. And you can add rhythm that way, where the movement's still pretty general. All right, but we're adding this rhythm component that you won't get from maybe a regular throw. All right. So this is how, in general, I program extensive throwing cycles, um, and this can work on kind of any time scale we want it to. Uh, but like I said, just kind of sticking to the, uh, the throwing load increases and making sure we keep that percentage below 95%. Like I said in the beginning, I know that number is really high, uh, but if we're going into an intensive phase, we're going to get up to a pretty high number, kind of leading into that first week at full effort because we want a taste of, of that intensity and kind of what that feels like. We want to prep the tissue and the nervous system for that. Um, so that's why I've kind of taken it up to here. Once we're in an intensive phase, all right, our extensive days or our low days are, are going to be lower than 95%. All right, so that's where we're going to really take it down. Our low days may be. 70 or 75 percent and that's kind of where that comes into play but in a, in a purely extensive phase we can get up to 95 percent and still be all right all right if you're looking for more information about throwing programming remote programming um, or in-person training uh, check out my website tyleransman.com um, or my instagram or twitter at tyler underscore ansman